All right, guys, so um, today I have my bench day. Um, this is my third bench day of the week. I bench on Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Um, so today I have a single, um, and then I'm doing a four by five ascending RPE. Um, yesterday was like a really big session for me. Um, my PR for a gym lift in the gym for like just deadlift is um, 6.89, um, but that was actually after like a soft peak. And like yesterday, like I'll put it on the screen, this next clip like right here. But um, that was basically the heaviest I've ever pulled in the gym, like without a peak uh, or just in general. So um, I'm really, really experiencing this big spur of progress right right now. Um, probably a little bit into like why I think that is um, a little bit later on in the video. But um, yeah, I'll show you guys um, my single um, when I work up to it. Basically, like what I do with my singles on bench is just I based on how good I feel. That determines like how much do I push it on that day. So try to keep it between like you know an eight to nine on bench because it's just more recoverable. Um, but yeah, I'll show you guys that. Okay, so that was by far the best that that way has ever moved. And that's like a PR for being a self handoff. Um, so as much as I want to go up, like I'm kind of trying to be as smart as I possibly can with my training because um, I don't want to overwhelm my death capacity. And I know that you know I could probably could get a little bit of something today, but it's not worth it to me from a fatigue perspective. I want to make sure my my volume is still productive. Um, so right now I have a 4x5 ascending about, um, up to like an RPE, I believe it's a 7 this this week. So I'm going to start off with 275 and then we'll see where I kind of end up. Probably somewhere around 300, so um, I'll show you guys that. So something that a lot of people suck at when they're wrapping their wrists is actually wrapping their wrist. So I'm gonna show you guys essentially like how I do it. So um, first off, like basically the reason why you use wrist straps in the first place is so you can get a little of um, stability in the wrist from the wrist strap, you know, have less like, um, you know, activation or focus on having to stabilize your wrist joint. Um, basically having your wrist strap will basically allow you to have, like when you're benching your wrist a little bit extended back, um, having a little bit of support there is going to actually allow you to um, press a little bit more through your hand, depending on how much wrist extension that you have. That you have, wow, that was weird. Yeah, you have, um, but essentially, when I'm wrapping it, what you want to do is basically wrap, wrap it across your hand on top of your wrist joint, kind of like this. So, like, instead of it going like right here across your, your hand, like a lot of people do, if you're just going across your wrist, you want to roll down around and pull it tight. And then it should be right on the wrist joint. So when you go back to light like this, uh, on the bench press, when you're actually pressing through the palm of your hand, um, and squeezing with your fingers to a lockout, um, it's gonna allow you to get a little bit more off, off your chest. That's another big tip, is like squeeze like, like through mid-range, like in order to get your triceps involved, like squeeze with, 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 with the outside, like two fingers, like these bad boys. Um, I'll get you a little bit more of that lateral force um, transmission, and you're gonna get more of your triceps involved. Um, like the pecs are going to be maximally activated regardless because you're basically AB ducting the, the shoulder and bringing it across, which is a function of the pec. Um, but getting the triceps involved will help you out with like these two of those harder reps.
So that felt really good. Um, that was probably a 6.5, honestly, on um, bench. So like, basically what I'll do is like, just add like five to um, two and a half kilos um, per set on this day, um, just because it's my, basically my lightest bench day of the week. Um, but training's been going really well on bench. I really don't know like why, that's all of a sudden like going up. Like I did just change four times a week benching. Um, my body's just responding well to that. I'm also like not sick anymore. I was kind of sick all through um, October through December, and like now I'm not. I, I'm still just around 190. Um, sales went up a little bit slowly, um, like half a pound a week, I think, but um, just been trying to manage my stress levels and going well, outside of training. But it's really exciting actually having this happen because um, I still have five more months to go into the this meet. So uh, the fact that Bench is going so well. Um, it's really exciting, just training in general. So um, I'll have some accessories right now. I'll film those and probably do a little voiceover. So one other thing about bench I would recommend is that if you have a flat sole shoe that has a hard sole, um, that's what I recommend benching in because you're going to have more force transfer from your legs into the barbell and having a little more stability. Uh, if you're running, like, using running shoes, you're going to have a little bit less um, leg drive and less stability because it's just more of that spring. Um, it's less of flat sole. So, um, you know, use like flat sole Converse or something like that. Something that I would recommend using. Dallin, what are you doing? Dallin. 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 Huh? Explain yourself. What the f what is this? Demonstrate. Demonstrate, please. Uh -huh. The people demand it. I, I, I am people. <laughs> he doesn't want to show hip thrusting. Okay, whatever. Okay, um, so this is basically all my accessories that I did after it. I did three sets of 10 to 12 on incline dumbbell press. Um, and then I had three sets of 10 to 20 on single arm cross body tricep push downs. Then I had um, three sets of lat prayers. Three sets of of uh, inclined dumbbell curls, um, and then three sets, three sets of cable ladder raises as well, as well with as um, some abs. But I didn't record that because abs are boring. But I want to talk to you guys a little bit about what my sort of plan is um, for this year. So first off, um, I'm not competing until um, January, February, March, April, May 15th or 13th. Um, so right now, my basic plan is I'm sitting right around 190 pounds um right now i did lose weight got down to like 188.4 at my lowest from like my peak bulk weight of like 194.4 um and so i lost about six pounds and uh but you know kind of eating back up again um getting back on my on my diet um and already seeing pretty good results in regards to how my training is feeling and my overall body composition and especially training for performance so um, my, you know, I have five months to really eat into this meat because I'm still really underweight for the 90 kilo class. Um, I can really be like 208, which I think is like 95 kilos. Um, or, you know, right around, around that and actually still be able to, you know, easily cut down to, um, 90 kilos. But like my whole general plan is just gain like one to two, two pounds a month, closer to two pounds initially, maybe tapering off a little bit, but, um, I'm really just... Again, like nutrition for me is all about performance and, and energy. And like I want to see the scale go up. That's obviously part of my, my goal. But the fact of the matter is that like I'm performing so well right now. I am not really concerned about increasing calories too much. Like my energy is really good. Um, hunger is low. And I'm just really happy with how training is going. So um, we, my coach and I were going to do a mock meet in February, but kind of just made the choice that we just kind of just want to want to build. Um, going into this meet, especially because I'm just coming off of being sick and like, you know, we weren't really expecting this sort of progress out of nowhere. Um, like I have just hit PR after PR. Um, I hit like that 694 deadlift, which is my heaviest deadlift I've ever hit 
in a gym. Um, last week I hit 463, 44 on the squat, like RP7. And then like I hit 375 on bench um, last week. And I probably could hit like 380 today. Um, so progress has just been kind of absurd. I have not expected this at all. Um, but there are mainly like a few reasons why I think this is happening. I think number one, um, I'm not sick anymore. And I was really sick from about like the last week of September through about the last week of d December, like basically off and on. Um, you know, I got COVID all, all along the way, like RSV, the flu, like really everything you really possibly could have gotten. I got sick. Like this is like the most miserable I've ever felt in my entire life. And now that I, you know, I feel better. It's like, well, now my body can actually adapt to the stimulus that it's, it's giving me. Uh, that's right. I've been, been giving it. Um, second thing is because um, I am hypothyroid. I have blood work rate that basically says that I have low T3 and T4, which are the main thyroid hormones. Um, and even when I was supplementing uh, 25 micrograms of T3 and 100 micrograms of T4 under their doctor's supervision, um, my blood levels were still low. And so we basically doubled that. And I got blood work back again, and my thyroid's actually working right now. And that's really important because you can't really recover. You can't build muscle. You can't burn fat as effectively if you're hypothyroid. Um, like, I feel like I actually have, have energy right now. I feel like I actually, like, can do normal people things. Like, when you're hypothyroid, like, you can't, like, go to the bathroom. Like, I'm, like, I always feel, like, kind of bloated and, like, kind of constipated. So, like, I know it's kind of, like, TMI, but, like, it's stuff I've been dealing with. And so, like, I feel like I'm actually making progress because of that. And now that I'm in normal ranges because we've adjusted my, my dose of uh, thyroid hormone accordingly. But that's been something that's been really helpful. And then I think just like the last thing has been like, um, I've gotten to be a lot more objective with my own training. And that's one of the biggest things about, I've had to learn the hard way with this really the past three, three months of training, um, and really six months since like I ever like strained my, my lat, like deadlift has not been feeling good at all. Um, I haven't really been able to make any progress on that. Um, but like everything was kind of just going my, not my, my way. And so I had to really abandon my, my ego and really learn how to auto-regulate and be okay with like not being as strong as I wanted to and learning how to auto-regulate. And that's been a really big thing for me um, because like I, I, I sometimes I'm stubborn and I'm like, oh, okay, I had to hit this, this number or whatnot. But like I have an idea in my head and I, I don't really have any attachment to it. Um, if that's what I get, then that's what I get. And I'm excited about it and, and whatnot. But I'm kind of become so much more process oriented I'm okay with down, down um, shifts in performance and whatnot. Um, and overall, um, I feel like I'm finally like making the progress I deserve to, that I really have been working for for so long. I've been plateaued for such a long time where making not as good progress as I probably should have for a lot of reasons beyond my control. But like, I feel like this is really like a fun sort of progress. This is just how progress sometimes happens after you get past, you know, as you're becoming more advanced. Um, this is my year, this is my sixth year of training. I am an advanced lifter now. And so, you know, um, I'm just excited to keep building. Um, I have no expectations on like what goals and what numbers I'm going to hit. I'm just going to do, do my best, have fun, and then see what I have um, by the time the meet comes around. That's kind of just the mindset I've found that is that's the best for powerlifting. Like having a having an idea of what you want to hit, I, I think it's good, but like you have to just be totally process oriented. And like that's why we train anyways is because we, it's because we love it. Um, so yeah, that's why the video, if you have any questions, just let me know.